Hello, fourth graders, it's Miss Leanne. Today we're gonna to begin lesson 2-1, part one. Mental math, finding sums and differences. The objective is I can use properties and strategies to change the structure of a problem to add and subtract with mental math. You might be asking what mental math is and you may be thinking, hey, mental math, I can do that in my head. That's a yes and a no answer. Mental math simply means that you can take apart these numbers and manipulate them in a way that you can easily add them or subtract them using mental methods within the properties and the strategies. Quickly, we'll discuss some of those properties. This is the commutative property where it says you can flip around, it says numbers can be added in any order and the sum remains the same. I put a little car there to show a commute, showing that you could do five plus seven or seven plus five. It doesn't matter which order you put those numbers. When you add them together, the answer or the sum does not change. The next property we'll look at is the associative property of addition. And I like to think of that as like friends that are hanging out. The associative property states that add ends can be regrouped and the sums remain the same. So you can see my little friends, friend A, friend B, and friend C. It's like when the friends hang together, you can see when you, the parentheses are grouped around different numbers at different times, the answers will still remain the same. The last one is the identity property. Zero is like looking into a mirror. You or the number that is looking into the zero, zero will reflect back. So the identity property states that the sum of any number and zero, adding zero, is that number. So you can see the person looking into the zero, which looks like a mirror, is that person. Here are our notes for the first part of topic two, addition and subtraction. There are properties and then there are strategies. There are two different things, properties and strategies. There are three properties of addition. I showed you before, there is the commutative, the associative, and the identity. The first one is the commutative. To commute, you can see I have a little car here that I have drawn. It means to, like when you are driving, like I would drive from my house to Ross and from Ross to back home. I'm commuting to go back and forth. Like I said, it's saying seven, five plus seven or seven plus five. It doesn't matter which order you put it, both are going to equal 12. The second property is the associative, like to associate, like when you have friends, friends hanging out. I explained that like I have two friends, Lee and Katie. So me and Lee can be hanging out and then Katie can join us later and we're still all friends. It's the same amount of friends. Or Lee and Katie can be hanging out. You see those parentheses, it's grouping those people together or those numbers together first. Lee and Katie be, can be hanging out and then I can join later. It doesn't matter, we're still all friends. It's the same amount of friends. When we apply that to numbers, you can look and you can see it's four plus three in the parentheses and then eight comes to hang out later. Or you can do four plus and then the three and the eight are hanging out and the four will come light later. Either way, when you do four plus three, that equals seven plus eight, and then your answer will be 15. If you look at the other way, it's four, and then three and eight together are 11. When you add four to 11, your answer is 15. Either way, you are getting the same answer in the associative property. It's just, who you are going to have hang out or group together first. And lastly, there is the identity property, like your identity, who you are, right? You are you, the identity property, just like the number is that number. It's like looking into the mirror. We refer the zero as a mirror, it's looking into the mirror. So two plus 
zero, and you can see it's like a mirror, there's that little reflection of itself in the mirror, two plus zero equals two, just like four plus zero equals four, and six plus zero equals six. And then there are strategies. The first strategy that I want to talk to you today relates directly to addition, and that is the break apart or the place value strategy. Why is this important? Okay, we just finished a topic speaking about place value. So this break, break apart method of addition uses that place value when you do your expanded form to add numbers. Our addition problem is 2,868 plus 1,136. And what you are going to do is you are going to break this number up by its place value. So you take 2,000, that's the first number, in this place value, expanded form, and then you will do 800, then you have 60, and then you have four. And likewise, you have 1,000 plus 100 plus 30, and then six. Then what you do, is you add each place value together. 2,000 plus 1,000 is 3,000. 800 plus 100 is 900. 60 plus 30 is 90. And four plus six is 10. Once you get these expanded forms of these different added or different sums, you take these partial sums and you add them together. Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Nine plus one is 10 then you regroup the one. One plus nine is 10 again, drop the zero and regroup the one. One plus three is four, that is 4,000. You may think, wow, this is a long way to go about it, but it's actually easier because you are grouping the place values together. You have to remember, no matter if you're adding, subtracting, multiplying or dividing, you always have to honor the place value. It matters how many zeros or where that number is placed. It changes everything completely when it's not placed correctly. You need to honor the place value. Today, we're going to go ahead and work on using either properties of addition or this strategy. Good luck.